it's just you and me. Yes. You and me, babe. Right, right honey? You, you got, and I, me, I, babe. I got you. Yeah. So um, I talked with Alan about uh, building number six and some of the stuff that he studied, uh, you know, he suggested that maybe there was some kind of a weird thing going on there. And he said, Alan, um, if you look at the hole from the aerial photographs and you zoom in, what you see on the bottom level is what appears to be the perimeter columns, the spandrels from the north wall of the North Tower. The building number six was just to the north of the North Tower when it blew up. I mean, that's where, that's where it was. So, you know, all these theories about building number six, which has never been included in 9-11 synthesis, because that's just what it is. It's uh, a structural overload, pancake. This is was probably the only place in 9-11 that a pancake collapse occurred. Hmm. That is technically a pancake where you have a roof structure and then you have a floor structure and floor, 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 floor. The roof structure gets overloaded structurally with uh, spandrels from the, you know, they're falling off, they're being blown off the north face of the North Tower, lands on the roof, causing it to fail. And then you got the weight of both the spandrels and the roof falling on the floor below it. So yeah. that, is, you know, that is technically, you know, the fat fasteners for each one of the floors or the, you know, everything failed, you know, the fastener systems failed. Uh, yeah, this is all, this is real prime mechanical stuff. Hmm. And people have made so much out of it, or it, it, it appears, that's what it appears to be to me is real basic, mechanical, straightforward stuff. Yeah. Well, to you. Um, yeah. I don't have a mechanical brain. I'm afraid I do. Yes, you are. You are a tron a, what do they call it? A tron a tr I can't think of the word. An android? Yeah. It ends in tron. Oh, aut automatron. <laughs> automatron, right. Mm -hmm. So have you eaten yet? Yeah, I had peanut butter and toast. Oh, here comes Barbara. I'm eating salad. Good for you. Good for you. A big one. <laughs> oh, Ray wants to join the Zoom. The Zoom. Who does? Uh, Ray. Uh, however you pronounce his last name. Let me send him the link. Oh, Ray wants to join it? I don't know that we want Ray. I never sent him the link. I know. Well, someone told him about it. Well, Hi, I, po I, I, Hi, posted that we, I posted that this is what we were doing, but Ray, I don't want here tonight. Yeah. Oh, all right. So you want me to ignore like his message? Yeah. Yeah. All he's right. going to want to talk about Bill. He's going to want to talk about the explosion when the plane struck the tower and the sound and all that. So yeah, I don't want to draft, you know, drift from our from our purpose tonight. How are you doing, Barbara? Hi, Barbara. It's nice Hi, to see you. <laughs> a real person with a face, even. Yeah, I'm. I'm in a restaurant, and it's really bright sun. So I have to get back from the screen quite a quite a bit to avoid yeah, it. That's a, that you know, that's, that's a, an sky. ideal proportion <laughs> and and uh, proximity if you're using uh, the microphone on the computer. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Oh, that's a really good proximity to to whatever it is your uh, computer. Oh. Okay, so I have to be back from it to avoid the light, the sunlight glare. Oh, the sunlight! I got you. Yeah, the sunlight. If I do this, it's too much bright. Nice. I mean, yeah. nice that you have sunlight out there. <laughs> yeah, we we just had a snowstorm last night. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to do donuts in the parking lot. What's that got to do with anything? The snow. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, say that to my partner a lot. 
<laughs> non sequiturs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it takes a while to follow Lorenzo sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little too literal minded. <laughs> yeah. So and between oh, between my tech go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Between my technical uh, and artistic sides, uh, you know, things can get fun. Oh yeah. And you're also 78 going on eight. <laughs> yeah, just a minute. I'm 75. Let's not knock it. <laughs> I'm saying he's he doesn't act his age. He acts like he's eight years old. <laughs> oh, I, you're frozen, I, Barbara. That's funny that she's. By the way, to my surprise. Oh, I'm frozen. Oh, no. You were, but now you're not. I see myself moving. Oh, to my surprise. I learned from Richard Gage, his birthday was a couple of days ago. Yeah. Right. And I thought he was like in his 50s. He's 68. Oh, He's wow. getting old, too. Yeah. He's Still in good shape. Yeah. 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 almost 70 years old. There's a ton of energy. Oh, uh, way, way too much. <laughs> he has a ton of energy. Yeah, he does. So um, his birthday was the 20th. Isn't that the day that he was um, uh, the rally, Freedom Rally in Orlando was beginning that he was going to speak at? He, he was in Florida for his birthday. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got today where, Lorenzo, you're going to be presenting your model? Is sure. That that's a good idea. Shall we get started or should we sure. wait a few minutes? Well, we don't want to is waste it just, time. Is it just me? Yeah, it it's just now. you this time. Okay. Um, well, I want you to know that I've now read this whole ground zero model. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know what to compare it to. Okay. Very good. All I'm right. a little bit confused, by the way, because this guy, um, uh, what was his oh. name? Um, Jeff Prager was on previous yes. call that I was on, and yet the books by Heinz Palmer, and right. Jeff Prager represented this book as his book. It's not. Right. So there's a lot of misrepresentation going on, but yeah. um, it is an interesting uh, point of view. I gotta see I think, if I, can find it's, I think uh, Jeff did chapter four in that. Yeah, book. he did a very short chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it definitely is should not be represented as quote his book. Unquote. Right. Agreed. For sure. Yeah. I don't have I don't have to worry about that because I don't have a book. Oh well, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Need a ghost. You know, I've, got, I've got about a three hundred and fifty page book manuscript on the Pentagon attack. And I have yeah, that's a fascinating, that's one of the studies that we do in 9-11 synthesis. Yeah. And, I, and uh, if you would like to take a look at that, we could. I'm going to share the screen. Well, so I, what, wanna, I, I want us to talk about World Trade Center 1, 2, 7. OK, so you want to start with 1 and 2? Yeah, that's that's what matters to me. Because okay. it's what matters to the public, you know? Right. I think right. there's been all too much emphasis uh, strategically on World Trade Center 7. Are you familiar with World Trade Center 4, Barbara? Yeah, I am. Okay. That's sort of, I don't know what's going on with the awareness around that, but uh, this is uh, around, this is the page dedicated to one and two. And um, so we're going to uh, just interpret what we're seeing in pictures, or I will do that for now, a this start. is the pit. This is the um, the cavities in the pit, right? No, this is uh, the uh, west bathtub. This is where Tower uh, yeah. One and Two stood. This is the uh, the South Tower area, the South Tower here, and this okay, is okay. The so there are no there are no cavities like in four. Is that correct? No, no, there are what appear to be subsidence uh, craters. Yeah. You know, technically uh, called subsidence craters, but not nearly as deep as seven. Well, we don't know I mean, because four. they never. I meant four. I meant four. four. 
Right. Well, WTC7, I will presume, had a similar uh, uh, cavity, or if they had to excavate it because they built upon it really soon. Um, I'm going to surmise that it had uh, at least one cavity, possibly two, similar to what we've uh, discovered. The, beneath deepest, the, the deepest one was in four? That's the only one that was excavated. Oh, I see. that I know of. Building number seven was a secret all the way down the line. Nobody could get near the site of building number seven. I found no images of it. Uh, hmm. People were, you know, that day people were turned away. I'm remembering uh, Richard's uh, interview with Captain Patterson oh. um, and how he, I mean, he was one of my, he was one of the prime witnesses. He was there, he, his allegations that he was there, his mm -hmm. And his story is uh, uh, very much in line with a lot of the other stories talking about uh, the sequence of events, including the uh, seismic events uh, yeah. correlating with certain things happening. So, yeah, this is um, th this is what pretty much the way they left, um, very close to the way they left uh, the site of the Twin Towers, and they built the memorial pools on top of each one of these sites. Right. Yeah. So they. Uh, Chris Joyous said that he was underneath this uh, in an interview we had with him a few years ago. He said he was underneath the uh, um, uh, the, the memorial pools, and he could see the steel sticking up out of the hole beneath the pool. And this would have been beneath, uh, you know, that's, of course, beneath one of the pools, this whole area here. I don't know. He, I forget the story about how he got down there, but he was there and he described uh, underneath the memorial pool, steel sticking up out of this hole. Okay. So they didn't, they, apparently they never excavated those holes. Uh, it was a very public space. Um, I've got my conspiracy theories about, there's a number of reasons I believe that they uh, did what I, what I have analyzed having happened you know and we're talking about the thermonuclear explosions the thermonuclear events that i uh, feel strongly occurred beneath each one of these towers just seconds previous to their uh collapse and we can go further down into the site and i'll go through videos and stuff to so, share. So your understanding is that the 2.1 and 2.3 richter scales uh events were just before the collapses of each tower Richard Gage uh, gave a presentation uh, that uh, Andrei Rousseau and a few other people that he sourced from, but he gave a great presentation on how the uh, timing of those events was uh, moved ahead uh, from their actual timing, according to the seism seismographs at, uh, was it Cornell? No, uh, I forget the unit. Uh, uh, doesn't matter right now. It's it's all you know, public record. But um that, that, wasn't my question. that wasn't my question. What's that? Uh, that wasn't my question. There are oh. two sets of explosions. Um, one of them was before the plane impacts on the two towers. That's like, the one that, yeah. Can I That's... finish? I'll tell you when I'm done with this. Section. Okay, okay, Barbara. Okay. So there were two sets of explosions. Um, the first set was pre plane impacts, 14 seconds before first. World Trade Center impact, 17 seconds, approximately before World Trade Center 2 impact. And then there were ex explosions just before the collapses. Right. So which set are you referring to when you refer to the 2.1 and 2.3 Richter scale? Okay. Uh, the 2.3 was tower uh, just prior to uh, tower uh, one coming down. And the 2.1 was just prior to uh, tower two coming down. Mm-hmm. Okay. But Tower 2 came down first. Right. Yeah. That was the lesser of the two explosions, or the two seism right. seism right. seismic events, right. Well, why don't we go to your model? Um, because you, what's interesting to me about your model is you, you, you agree with the uh, Heinz Palmer and company, if I understand correctly, that there were uh, regardless of whether it was uh, a uh, nuclear reactor that went critical or a nuclear bomb uh, or whatever, um, this massive source of explosive power um, in the bedrock, right? Beneath the lowest level of the basement, B6. Considerably, yeah. That. 
right? considerably uh, yes it would be for these two um uh models i would say that the um um uh, the point would be probably and i as a, as a layman and just under looking at this picture i would venture to say maybe 60 to 80 feet 50 50 to 80 feet beneath the tower would have been a, a place to place a device and my uh, question was a little different um do you agree with uh palmer and company I, I understand that you do tell me if i'm wrong that uh, you have whatever device it was um below in the bedrock below the bottom b6 level in other words absolutely yes that is correct uh, uh, yeah that's correct all right so it had to have been pre-placed before the towers were built not right? necessarily not necessarily Why? how could it uh, possibly have been put down there afterwards uh they could, uh, well the, imagine the uh advances that they've made in thermonuclear science since project plowshare first of all that the devices are probably much more sophisticated and able to be controlled uh, as far as their yield goes i mean they had dial a yield way back then when they were talking about using uh thermonuclear devices for peaceful yeah, but that's not my question my question is you have to have a cavity to put it on if you agree with palmer and company all right so yeah uh the, yes you do have to uh have the cavity a, would have to have been pre-created correct no no uh it would have to have been drilled and have been placed down there in any case it would have have to have been drilled uh down you would well, have, then to, it would have had to have been drilled by somebody with access to the to the b6 level and below absolutely correct a huge drill not necessarily that big a drill mm -hmm. okay they, they make these things uh, in sections you know like eight foot sections six foot eight foot sections they can load on the back of a device and uh so that's one option i'm not saying that that's what it is but you know drilling uh it, you know was an option they have what are called diamond core drills uh six eight you know 12 16 inches in diameter and that's all you need well the let me just say, hold on, let's see. Um, this is important. Uh, shoot, what is that? Uh, um, I don't know why I didn't mark mark the page, but anyway, there is a um, there is this very important witness um, that I already knew about, but it's mentioned in the. Um, in the Palmer book, can I find that page right now? Well, why don't we just go through this presentation, Barbara? Yeah, well, let me make my point here. I don't need to find it before I say it. And that is, um, I think that I think that it's almost certain that um, it's almost certain that Kalazov is correct insofar as his claim that um, the the building was only approved um, with a pre pre engineered means of destruction, and that's actually uh, that's actually there's a, a video uh, of a witness to that effect, um, which you probably know about. Uh, here we go, Rachel McIntosh, page sixty eight of his book Ground Zero Model. Um, now, this is the building seven, but you can in, extrapolate from building seven. Building seven architectural blueprints were physically seen by Rachel McIntosh, the architectural firm tasked with reinforcing Mayor Giuliani's building seven bunker on the 23rd floor. The blueprint she saw, saw show unambiguously and in very clear language, we built in demolition plan as part of the architectural drawings. And she's on record with this video, that's page 68. So I, I, I'm working on the, the reasonable assumption that um, they didn't have to drill it after the fact, that this was designed into the structure. Well, you know, then that's a, a good assumption to have, but I'm gonna say that I don't know. Uh, yeah, when we don't know for how sure. they're replaced. And, yeah, and we don't that, know. yeah, that is not really the issue in, in any case. Well, I think it's incredibly important. Well, uh, it could be, but it's not what I focus on. No, that's fine. That it yeah, was there, whatever it was, 
whatever I'm it was. I'm interested in your model. So what's that, Barbara? I'm interested in your model because, because if I understand your graphic correctly, um, you have an explosion that causes the core, the core of the building to suddenly subside. And collapse. That, yeah, collapse. That, it forms a yeah. It forms a, a it substance. Pulls core. The, out, the outer. Uh, yeah. So, would you like me to go ahead with this presentation, yeah, yeah, or would you yeah. like to give it? Yeah. All right. Um, please wait for me to go through the presentation before you uh, have questions or comments. Well, except for clarification questions. Okay. If I don't know what you mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll let you read this out loud if you wish. No, I, I, I've, I've already read it. Uh, do you un do you understand what the deep hole is? Well, you, the subsidence crater. No, this is another another feature in the geo geotechnical survey, which uh, bleeds over oh. from building number four. Oh, you're not talking about the subsidence crater now? Yeah, I'm talking about this is the crater beneath uh, WTC2 or the subsidence crater beneath. Right, I know. Is that what you're calling the deep hole? No, this is the deep hole over here. Oh, separate. Okay. Separate. Uh, in the damage reports. And that we have here. Here's WTC2, which they say is gone by the mm -hmm. code that's green. And then they code uh, this section, this area over here as a deep hole. Oh, okay. Uh, and this this is another damage report, uh, just you know, corroborating that first one. This is a this is the animation that I did. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the one I was referring to. Mm -hmm. It pulls down and, the outer cladding. Right. It is. Um, it does show the core descending, and then in the second animation, uh, it shows the sides being pulled in over here by the uh, floor trusses, yeah. which are connected to the core and the uh, perimeter columns. Yeah, that's the one that that I was referring to. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what, you know, after after all the analysis, I said that the reason that they did this was to pre-stress the fasteners between the core and the column. It's a purely mechanical, you know, the reason that they did it. I, I said, why did they want to do that? Why did they spend all this energy, you know, creating a, a subsidence? So, well, yeah, so that it wouldn't fall over on other buildings as much that's as that's not that's there. not quite true. They blew the whole thing up within seconds of the substance. There wasn't going to fall. It blew up all over the rest of Manhattan. Hundreds yeah. of yards of stuff was thrown. Hundreds of yards. They're not worried about it falling over. The core is subsiding so that it's it's uh, causing these fasteners to weaken or fail, so that the perimeter could then be blown out by the explosive force starting at. So clarification the... question, are you saying yes. that because they exploded it, you're you're wondering why they even bothered to have the subsidence to pull the cladding down? For the longest time, I was wondering about that. Yeah, Barbara, until I finally uh, came to a conclusion that it was a mechanical uh, weakening of the structure so that it would allow the perimeter columns to be blown away from the building. Otherwise, if they did that, it might just have fallen over if they hadn't blown it up from the top down. Um, it was the bottom structure failing it. Who knows what it would have done without um, the explosive uh, demolition from the top down after they dropped the core? Well, they had to do that so that people would believe the planes had something to do with it. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, so clarification made. Um, project, you're familiar with Project Plowshare. Yeah, you mentioned that before. I knew Edward Teller, by the way. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Do you? Very, Barbara, a very, very evil man. Well, I have to ask you a question. Are there peaceful uses for nuclear explosions? Sure. That was his. Um, in this in this clip here, I'd just love to play this this clip because he's in it, and then we'll get right onto the rest of the presentation. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. He and I were at the Hoover Institution together at Stanford University. This. Is this the nuclear um, oh, one, two, landscape? Three, four.
Yes, Barbara. Yeah, I, I can't hear anything, so I'm not sure what's the point of watching it. Oh, you, oh, there was no sound on for it. No sound. Oh, that's too, I wonder why. Okay. Um, yeah, but you did see uh, Edward Teller. Oh, yeah. Good. A young Edward Teller. <laughs> yes. Well, that was, when, when was that done? Was that in the late 40s, early 50s? Now, this is Operation Plowshare, right? Yes. Yeah. That was I, the I 70s, wasn't it? Yeah, I would think later than that, yeah. Yeah. It's when they were into nuclear landscaping and having all kinds of, you know, rationales for so-called peaceful uses of nuclear weapons. Right. Oh, going to go back to uh, screen share. Sorry about that. We're going to get the, get back to my page again. There we go. Screen share. All right. I'm having problems with my video. It keeps flipping I know. to other people's faces and can, weird I can stuff. See you know. What? I can hear you. Yes, but I had to dark my video because it was doing weird things. Okay, uh, this is a really good clip here. Uh, I'll just let it run and, and cycle it through. But just pay close attention to the details as uh, in the area that I uh, show. 1650. Oh, darn it. Is this one or two? Is it one or two? What? Is it building one or two? I'm not sure which one this is. I, uh, it's okay. The North Tower had the uh, antenna. I think this is the one without the antenna. So I think it's the South Tower, but I'm not sure. Not sure. Uh, it looks to me like it's almost certainly building two, but I can't be sure. That would be the South Tower. Yeah. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Now, what are we looking for here? Okay. Uh, looking at this corner here mm -hmm. and, and looking at uh, the smoke, it's just a sequence of events that we're looking at. And I'm going to uh, cycle it uh, a couple of times through this, Barbara. Come on. Okay. Okay. I got to get the uh, 16. All right. Right about now, 1650. Okay, right here, the detail. I'm going to back it up a little. You notice that the core is descending. Because, no, I didn't notice. Tell well, me what to look for. All right. Looking at this corner, this is the uh, corner of the perimeter. Uh, you know, this is the corner of the perimeter structure. Yeah. Of, of Tower 2. Uh -huh. uh, this, and you also notice that there was thermite uh, cutting. Yeah, you know, there, there was a liquid molten uh, steel iron. Uh, coming out. I'll play that back just a little bit. No, that that's presumably like the 82nd floor or so where it came yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can see the uh, melting of the structure. Yeah. But I don't show. Tell me what to look for that would implicate the core coming down. All right. Look right in this area here, and then watch these core columns. I mean, the perimeter columns as they are pulled inward by the trusses oh you want me to look for the inward pull okay well not just that but the way that this corner starts to slip over the bottom this top section of the corner uh, starts to slip over the bottom oh. uh, and and slightly offsets it, it moves towards the uh, back uh, towards well, that's the fine, but just because the outer corner um slips what is that how do we know that has to do with the core which is in the center of the building um we know that the top of the building is attached to the core well the whole thing's attached to the core right at this point here we're watching the top of the building start to 
uh, collapse before there's any explosive activity whatsoever happening at the top. It's just smoke at this point. Okay, so that's just before it starts to tip? Just before it starts to tip. This is at the point that it starts to move downward. Okay, Some... I understand. It moved downward a bit before it tipped. Yes, and then it as it starts to tip it, or as it starts to move downward is when the explosive ex activity in this vicinity in the core, the ex the high explosives in the core are detonated to displace, to throw all as much material as it possibly can away from the core. Because if they didn't destroy it from the top down, then it likely would have toppled eventually because of the uh, 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 oh, it descent. Was if, if it hadn't been effectively vaporized in our huh? in front of our eyes, it would that have wasn't vaporized. Over. That was that was blown up. Yeah, there's no vaporization at, at the top whatsoever, or very. I'm putting that in quotes. If it hadn't have been destroyed after it tilted at least 15 degrees, it would have fallen over on on the street. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. The, 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 the top would have fallen off and landed on top of something yep. that was still there. That's absolutely. Right. No argument. If they hadn't blown it up, that would have not really fallen down straight. It would have toppled. Okay, so go ahead. You're going to run this again? Okay, uh, because this is the point where the explosive... Uh, uh, the explosive demolition from the top down commences. This is where all the boom, 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 everything went flying out away from it uh, happens. In five seconds. Perfect timing, absolutely. They were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. How they accomplished it, I've got theories, but it's just a brilliant. Well, what's fascinating to me is they could not have known in advance that the what? top would tip. But they couldn't have known in advance exactly where the plane would strike. And no. so they- Yeah, they, uh, oh, they could have, uh, very close, because uh, the planes that, uh, we won't get into the details, but, uh, there are a lot of theories out there about what uh, equipment was used in the air, uh, airborne. Well, I understand. My point, my point is different. They couldn't have known exactly where the plane would strike. And in Close fact, enough. I'll, I'll let you know when my sentence is done. Okay. Um, they couldn't have known exactly where the plane would strike. And in fact, we can infer because it came in at an angle and kind of clipped diagonally that they probably intended to hit it straight on more straight on like in world trade center one so i why do you surmise that world trade center one was hit almost straight on so what world trade center two was hit at a diagonal angle yeah they hit it right where they wanted to almost perfectly uh, in both cases no matter where the plane we can agree from. to disagree about that my okay. point however was that because it came in at that angle and kind of took took the, the a diagonal corner of the building, not straight through, like straight on. Right. Yeah. Um, because of that, we have a tipping of the structure, and they had to have pre-prepared uh, the explosive destruction of the upper section on the chance that that would happen, and it yeah. did. They were pre-prepared for that. Absolutely. The whole thing was brilliantly designed and engineered. It was like near perfection. There was the, that one section of the core that didn't completely uh, collapse uh, and break up on its way down that Judy Woods uh, used as a prop. Um, yeah, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfectly done, but it was effectively done, very effectively done. And it was done in a way that it was sequenced and it makes an awful lot of sense to me now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, keep going. So the building, um, okay, we're uh, that clip. We don't need that clip anymore. We can go uh, back to the page. Yeah, this is uh, again a pre-stressing uh, of the structure so that the explosive 
uh, that started right around this area near where the plane struck, where the damage was done and where the thing tipped. It all makes sense, absolute sense, that mm -hmm. structural damage uh, allowed uh, it to start to tip when the core started to, to drop because the perimeter columns were damaged. You know, uh, less, least resistance, you know, is, you know, where there's least resistance. This is where the column, the, the support for the perimeter columns had been removed. And this is where the building is tipping when the core starts to drop. If the core didn't drop, that never would have followed. They wouldn't have had anything to follow. The core needed to be dropped. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And by the way, one of the um, big, quote, mysteries, unquote, in their mind, are you aware that there is a quite large group of, of uh, establishment engineers, structural engineers and civil engineers, who are who have um, done a critique and a uh, revisiting of the Halsey analysis of World Trade Center Seven, and they yeah, absolutely. You're talking about the Halsey that? report in the UK. You're aware of that? Oh no, I'm not aware of the UK. Not aware of the UK uh, study. Yeah, there's Thanks. a. It's been kind of secret. I know about it because I'm on the Europe call once a month. Mm -hmm. um, there was one. Thank you for sharing this. I, yeah, that's yeah. another fascinating demolition. Absolutely brilliantly done. Well, just so you know, they do not support everything that Halsey uh, said, and and uh, they said that he didn't even use the latest uh, algorithms. Oh, uh, I, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's a. It was a. It's a, another part of the show right now. Um, I don't know what's going on, Barbara. I just want to. You know, I just got my work that. Uh, yeah, so shall we go on with this or? Oh, yes, of course. Well, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Uh, let, there might be another another example here. Okay. Oh, could you could you back up a little bit when you? Yeah, right there. Richard Gage on seismic evidence. I don't know that I have that. If you could send that to me. Well, we can watch it right now if you want. Speaking well, I'm not sure I can hear it. Uh, oh, you can't hear it, right? was the Lamont Doherty Earth Energy Observatory. Okay, I'll send you the clip. Yeah, I would appreciate it. Actually, it's right on the website, on the Wix website that we have. You just have to click on it. On what website? The one that I'm showing you right now. That was what I just clicked on. Well, what website is that? The Wix website that I'm showing you right now, the one that this is all apart, all placed on. This whole Well, list. I would appreciate the clip if I could have the link. Okay, I, uh, I will uh, do that for you. Uh, Susie, do you have... Let me see if I can figure that out right now. Okay, hold on a second. Speaking of witnesses of explosions. Oh, stop it. One of the witnesses was the Lamont Doherty Earth I think Energy I got it. Observatory. Hold on a is this his, um, is, is this clip of Richard's about 15 minutes long? Yeah, about that. Yeah. He mentioned that to me, but I don't have it here. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful well, not beautiful. It's a a really well done presentation of the manipulation of the uh, seismographic, the times. Uh, Andre Rousseau is the, is the source of the material. Richard dress, right. Richard presents it. Yeah, and by the way, I, he got that from uh, from our World Trade Center grand jury petition. Yeah, um, well, it's it's critical. It's crucial. Yeah, it's critical to this study. It's part of the foundation. Yeah. By the way, I just want you to know. I think Sue Serpa knows this. Um, but Richard Gage and A and E absolutely would not say a word publicly about the pre-impact, pre-plane impact, basement or sub-basement explosions. They well, that's not, not their purview. Well, yeah, allow me to finish. I'll let you know when I'm done. They would not touch it. Um, and when Richard uh, became a plaintiff in our World Trade Center one two and seven grand jury petition of the lawyers committee um we did not want uh it included and i fought inside the lawyers committee he was not on the lawyers committee at the time i fought inside to include it mick harrison and the board voted to include it and it was only after it was included that richard did this about 15 minute documentary and was willing and he couldn't even do it as part of a and e they wouldn't let him he did it as an individual. Well, he did, you know, I appreciate this is one of the, I mean, the fundamental work that Richard did in exposing uh, 
you know, all the studies in nanothermite and just the nature of the destruction of the World Trade Center, uh, informing our architects and engineers. I was one of the first people that went to see him back in uh, 2007, or well, he was in Cambridge uh, at the Unitarian Church. And right after that, we went, uh, uh, Mike, my, my roommate Michael and I went to uh, see uh, Dr. Griffin at the Episcopal Church in Harvard Square. And Dr. Griffin, uh, you know, cut me to the bone and uh, let's get empir empirical yeah. and truth wherever it leads. And those are the two uh, things that he left me with. Mm -hmm. Let's be, let's get empirical and truth wherever it leads. So that's right. It's, it's, it's led me in some really deep, dark rabbit holes here when yeah, it comes no, to this. all of us. I mean, it's incredible. I agree with you that there are, there is definitely evidence of nuclear events. No question about it. The big question is exactly what. Well, for me, it was understanding what it was for, why they used it, um, and exactly what. We have a few people that are interested in that, and there doesn't seem to be enough evidence to really be conclusive, which is why I can't even go near that. Uh, that's going to be an argument for quite some time to come. That's why but the hold mechanic... on. You do. Let me finish, Barbara. I haven't finished yet. Thank you. I, I try to not interrupt you, too. Okay. Um, I try not to go there because I want to stick as close to the science and f as far away from other people's interpretations and hearsay about this as possible, which is why everything that I have relied on is either, well, Richard and Andre Rousseau's interpretation or the correction of the seismic data, which is, well, let me finish, let me finish, which is hey, Let me say it in words when you're done, because I have a big problem. All right. You know, we have a problem with communicating, and I don't like to interrupt either, but I also don't appreciate being interrupted when I'm in the middle no, of a of thought. So please let me finish speaking. That information is crucial. It's critical to understand why the timing, the magnitude of, the, of each event, and how it uh, affected the subterranean bedrock. Um, it would be great to see the core samples, and this is something that uh, Freedom of Information Act might be able to glean sometime in the future, but it isn't even being looked at right now, even by the Lawyers Committee, um, you know, as evidence. Neither are the uh, charts of the damage that was done to uh, the, the bedrock beneath building number four, which is totally contradictory to a bedrock survey that was done prior to the construction. This is prima facta, or whatever the word is, evidence, and it's being willfully ignored. That's all. Okay, I'm right. done. Okay, so let me just ask a question. Uh, I was confused by something you said about two minutes ago. Um, I think I heard you say, and I'll let you know when I'm done. Um, I think I heard you say that you are not claiming that these were nuclear events beneath the towers in World Trade Center 7. I thought you are. Okay, that's it. Are you, do you want me to clarify that? Yes, please. Um, at the beginning, I uh, did not go there because I didn't have the information that I got later about Project Plowshare and the, uh, uh, the peaceful use of nuclear thermonuclear events and how, how it was being looked at back in, like you said, in the 70s. And imagine what the technology is today uh, with all of the, um, you know, the, the amazing products that they produced during their research. Amazing, amazing elements um, that we don't know anything about. Uh, right. We can only surmise that they've done, uh, it, that scientists with that, that interest have gone leaps and bounds above what they produced back then, even though the United States public said we don't want any peaceful use of nuclear, so we're not going to fund the research anymore. And so so they had to go somewhere. They had to go somewhere and do something. They had the skill, they had the talent, and they had the backing, you know, just like the Nazis had the backing. Who is paying these? Who is paying right. them? That's not the part, important part, that they that this stuff is happening and it's being used. You can figure out who's doing it. I just want to know what, what they did. It went deep black. I agree it went deep black. So, so if you can if you can clarify um now that you've clarified that yes you do interpret that there are nuclear events beneath world trade center one two and seven the and question, four what and four. and four fine but back to world trade center one two and seven if i could um yeah. where what is your objection to heinz palmer's model what's the difference between your models well mine um is mechanical 
That's it's what? I couldn't hear the word? Mechanical. 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 Not a uh, radiological. Well, I think it has to do with, it has to, I'll finish, please. It has to do with the thermonuclear event reducing the bedrock, allowing a subsidence to form so that the structure could fall into it, creating stress on the on the on the joints on the on the uh, connecting joints between the column and the perimeter just prior to timed perfectly with the top down explosion they probably use something like an accelerometer or maybe somebody who's okay. over there with a plunger i don't know okay so i think what you're saying is that you your model does not include the vertical plasma jet going vertically no no okay. not, not as a destructive force not as a destructive okay. force all right so, so you basically your model is gravity driven. Is what? Gravity driven. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's much simpler, actually. Yeah, it's the it's the simplest I could. I mean, yeah. once I saw that core dropping, yeah, it's it's absolutely brilliant. It's I mean, and they had the stuff. They had the stuff to do it with. Yeah, another thought that I had that that I I just it, it, I can't get away from it, and that is. I don't think there were, I believe that whoever did this actually practiced it. That they practiced it somewhere on this planet, um, not with a building as high as 110 stories or even 47 stories maybe, but maybe 47 stories. Somewhere they brought down a building and they practiced it because otherwise they couldn't, they couldn't risk it. Would you like me to comment on that? Of course. Okay, um, there's a first time for everything and uh, engineers understand if they can build something, they understand pretty well how to take it down. Building number seven was uh, the most incredibly symmetrical um, implosion type um, demolition I've ever seen. Somebody's joining us. It might be, um, I don't know, who is it? Susie? It, it just says iPhone. Who is it? It had to have been someone invited. Well, yeah, let's find out who it is. They're still connecting. Yeah. Uh, Lauren? Yes, Barbara. Um, hey, I understand your mechanism. It's basically a nuclear event deep below uh, basement level six and the pulling down of the outer cladding due to gravity, simple gravity collapse. Uh, into the subsidence. I understand that. Do you rule out, and if so, why, um, the vertical jet of plasma that is in the Heinz Palmer model? Why do you rule that out necessarily? Well, in addition, I, I won't say uh, that I, I will say that that was not the destructive force. If there was indeed a jet like that, it wasn't a destructive force that reached to the top of the tower. Um, we could see clearly that the tower uh, was there and it was being blown out from the tower. I can see that clearly, that it was an explosive top-down demolition. It's There's no question in my mind that the, um, fin the grand finale was the explosive displacement of all the material around the core, you know, high explosive displacement of it. Um, there was uh, evidence in the sub-basement or below the sub-basement of the degra degradation of steel, the stuff that even Richard has talked about being pulled out of the pile, all the firemen talk about being pulled out of the pile. What it do you mean by degradation of steel? Um, you know, different uh, o oxidation, like you know, th things that look like they had been cut with a plasma. Uh, yeah. It could have, been thermite, could have most likely thermite. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was down in the pile, down deep in the uh, in the rubble underneath, you know, in these subsidences, a lot of the steel did sink into the substances. Mm -hmm. Again, the firemen were talking about them pulling the steel out with dripping. molten iron dripping molten off iron. the channel, the channel, yes, down the channels. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of uh, testimony that supports a really extraordinarily energetic event uh, beneath the towers. Well, I, Again, do see... I started out, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Barbara. I'm, I was just ranting. Well, I do, tell me if I'm wrong about this. Um, I'll tell you when I'm done with the thought. Um, I do see that his model and yours 
could be mutually contradictive for this reason. Um, at first, I was going to say, why couldn't they both be true? But I think that your model relies upon the core actually still being intact. Absolutely. When it falls and not being destroyed. His model destroys the core going vertically. Your model requires it at the beginning to be intact as the subsidence suddenly happens to pull the outer cladding in. Well, that would be weakening. Weak. Weaken well, weakening the connections between the uh, perimeter columns. Cladding is uh, is is superfluous. It's a thin aluminum. It blew well, I, off. By that, I mean the external columns. Yeah, uh, I have. You know, I, I'm a, I, I'm very much into engineering, and I have to stick very close to what we're talking about, and to you know to under, you know, I speak all this. This is my language. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you. There's. I have a pretty good nose for what really matters in order to prove something. And there was one claim in the book by Heinz Palmer that I think is extremely important. And that is on page, on page 102, I'll read it. This is something that uh, could be done right now by Neil Ferris or Stephen Jones right now, today. It says, um, hold on, 102, yeah, right. It says um, that he claims, I don't know if it's true. I'm There's so much it. background noise, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. On page 102 of the print, you know, published version, the print version yeah. of Heinz Palmer's book, The Ground Zero Model, 102, he, he claims that... Um, in the case of beta emission, radiation beta emission, such as strontium-90, that the decay of atoms on the dust surface, um, that the radiation would still be present inside of the iron microspheres, that you should be able to, um, to basically release this radiation and measure it by dissolving these, these microspheres in acid. So there's either radiation inside these microspheres, as he says, or there isn't. And I think that is could be a, a, a fundamentally simple test that could be done. Well, that, again, uh, that's not conclusive. It's hearsay at this point. I have no idea whether it's a bona fide test. No, but, but that's my very point, Lawrence. You do the experiment and you find out. Well, it'd be interesting to have somebody do the experiment then. Yeah, I'm going right to yeah. ask Niels about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, is there more of this then? That's pretty much it. I mean, we're, we're talking about moving forward. Oh, um, the deep hole that we talked about? Uh-huh. Uh, th these are, uh, th these are the, you're familiar with the two uh, uh, surveys, the, the pre and the post. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. And this is uh, the site of building number four with the building removed so that you can see the, uh, the detail, the clear right. detail. Um, this is what they call a till filled valley. This is the till or the wood and rock and whatever else would have been um, deposited in this crevice. Uh, beneath World Trade Center 4 and coming out across Liberty Street. Are, so are you the, saying that, that on the left, it's before Building 7 was built? This is before the World Trade Center was built. Oh, the World Trade Center 1 or 2? This is uh, the site of 4. Okay, that was my question. So so that's the um, the lay of the, uh, the bedrock before this, World Trade Center 4 was built. Right. This is uh, the slurry wall. You can see where the sl I mean, the slurry walls were right you know, in this vicinity here. One of them ran right up. In yeah, OK, here's one of them right over here, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is the site that building number four stood upon. And this there's a, I'll put a bring up a comparison again at some point. Uh, and and uh, this till filled valley uh, moved you know, from uh, sort of uh, north east to southwest. Uh, south southwest. Uh, through through this uh, corner here, um, you can see that there's a, a, a an, an amazing difference between the topography, um, you know, the geotechnical mapping 
of the site uh, previous to its construction. Mm -hmm. Much so this deeper. Is, yeah, much deeper. Well, a to in totally different forms. Uh, and the alteration of this over here is, is, you know, this is again what they call the deep hole. So this is an implication that energy flowed from the uh, area of the south tower in this direction here through um, you know, holes in the ground. So this is a geological study. And I'm trying to say, well, what, you know, so there was an awful lot of heat produced in the area beneath the south tower you know, here in order for it to melt or alter the bedrock and change. Why would it, why would it what would be the cause of the deep hole? Well, um, there was a hole. Uh, it, there's two, th I, the uh, uh, disruption of the material beneath uh, uh, the South Tower would have been uh, a, a an extraordinarily energetic event beneath the South Tower, something that was hot enough to melt, reduce to vaporize, melt and reduce the bedrock uh, mm -hmm. in order to form the substance beneath the uh, uh, South Tower. So this is just another one of the uh, geological uh, surveys. The I believe you said the deep hole it was outside of the perimeter of World Trade Center 4. Uh, this is where the deep... Uh-oh, you froze up. I, I, I stopped for a second. Oh. This is the South Tower here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the area that the deep hole would be in. This is where building number four was over here. In this area here is the site of building number four. They hadn't uh, done much. They're still uh, apparently you know, wetting down the site. They hadn't done an awful lot of excavation uh, in, this, in the area of building number four as yet. Okay. So we're back to the, uh, uh, to the uh, geotechnical drawings. Uh, this circle here uh, uh, is, is just to get the detail of this. I'm not as concerned about the rest of the site. This is pretty clear. But this detail down here is really indicative that there was a huge energy flow from over in this area here toward uh, the east. You think underground energy? Yeah. Oh, well, this is all subterranean. This is all this is all the bedrock that we're seeing. This is all you know, mapping of the the uh, geotechnical mapping of the depth. Right. So, so is the, the implication that you think there was like a tunnel, a natural tunnel? No, not a natural tunnel. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, a natural. It's a. It's called a um, a valley in the bedrock. It was mm -hmm. not a tunnel. It, it was open. See, this is an open top. This is open. It's not a tunnel. It's open. Open to the atmosphere. It's not. It's not beneath. It's not underneath all of the stuff. This is. A, this is exposed surface that they measured down to, which is like a till. What they call a till filled valley. Mm -hmm. um, and this area over here in particular, even though we've really noticed a great difference in the uh, the, the formation of the, uh, of the site building number four was on, over here, uh, it helps us to understand what occurred beneath uh, each of the towers, because the energy flow appears to have moved from here, wherever mm -hmm. the device was underneath here, through openings in the bedrock so it, you know pressure always goes from high to low we don't know what the um, bedrock beneath the site looked like but this valley could have gone down at an angle and it could have been like Sorry, a i couldn't hear you something went from high to low what was that high, oh pressure always goes oh, from pressure. high to low it's just simple physics yeah uh, temperature also yeah. so that's why the uh, limit of the size of these cavities they knew exactly what size devices to use in order to um and why they did building number four is still a mystery to me but that's okay i i like do you, do you think it had to do with the gold i don't so, know I, was there gold down there oh yes <laughs> oh good I'm, i hope somebody's enjoying it it's really beautiful yeah, stuff gold and silver yeah yeah i did hear they're taking <laughs> truckload truckloads of stuff out of there before 9 11 yeah they, they took so i don't know i don't even know whether they had vaults that were, uh, you know, whether they had to actually drill, yeah, or whether they had vaults beneath here that they uh, yeah, put the there, devices. There are photographs of the empty vaults before it collapsed. Yeah. yeah. So I would venture to say that they probably installed the uh, devices in the vaults, um, and it would be really interesting to see if the, if there were one or two vaults. I'm again, I'm a very very lazy researcher, Barbara. I just fall on things, but the, you know this. No, there were vaults. The um, I, I fell deep. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. I was on a train of thought, and I don't want to de get too derailed. I was on you know, literally a train of thought. I was on this 
peaceful journey. And suddenly, I, you know, the second time I looked at this report, uh, Susan will attest to, to what, what happened if she's still uh, with us. I am. What, you want me to take over? Yeah, for a second. You're, you're well versed, <laughs> really, really well versed on this. Uh, it raised your blood pressure. <laughs> yeah. It in, was, what, in what sense? Got angry? Well, it, literally. Uh, his blood pressure skyrocketed. But uh, that, that uh, who knows which came first, the cart or the horse? He did have a exactly. uh, uh, mitral it. valve that was failing uh, and had to have open heart surgery. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, um, by the way, this Jane all Park occurred at the same time as the discovery. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wonder, yeah. Which is the cart, which is the horse, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Right. Jane Clark's uh, partner, whom I know well, Dan, um, Dan Smith, he just had uh, open lung surgery and had part of his left lung removed. Oh, my goodness. Yes, they're doing a biopsy. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. Mm. I have to call her today to see how he's doing. He's still in the hospital. About two, three days later. Danny, Dan. right? Dan, Dan Smith, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm sorry, Barbara. Hope he, hope he pulls through. <clears throat> oh, he's okay. The question is, is it cancerous or not? And do they have to go in and take out the whole lung? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, James really on pin needles, you can imagine. So yeah. it's Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this was, uh, it's been quite a journey um, with all these discoveries. Yeah. I'll let you go on, Lorenzo. Um, all right. So, this was uh, the geotechnical uh, survey. Uh, Apparently, right after they excavated the site, after pouring this, after you know forming and pouring the slurry walls, because it's a course, uh, you know, th this is uh, it appears to be a, a rough survey of ex pre-existing terrain. Mm -hmm. They consequently flattened these areas, and you'll notice that in other photographs that these areas where there are hills and this deep valley, well, you'll see that well, that that, that that's what's left of the uh, till-filled valley. Uh, just this little corner here because of the destruction of the uh, the alteration, the thermal alteration, the melting mm -hmm. of bedrock in this area. Yeah. Um, this is, again, a very telling detail because you can see that the energy flow came from this direction or down below and up a combination from, you know, from whatever uh, occurred beneath the uh, South Tower. The energy mm -hmm. flow came in this direction here and altered even this till what they call the till filled valley mm -hmm. uh, that you know crosses liberty street right over here um mm -hmm. so right in this area here that we're looking at this this is no longer this but this yeah um and you can't get you can't get what's what you're seeing on the right without immense heat that's that's, that's, that's my general. opinion yeah that's my opinion uh, and it is the thermonuclear that I avoided for such a long time because I didn't have any evidence. But uh, finally, um, we, again, Richard has you know, poked me and prodded me over the years. Um, it was after Richard's last prodding that I discovered Project Plowshare because everybody's making, you know, you know my, my whole, they're all accusing me of being a, you know, a uh, how's it put? A, a nuker or you know you know it, it, there are all these slant these sl sl slurs slant, huh slurs thank you uh alleging that i'm a, a a bozo and i don't know what i'm talking about and i'm okay um I, i'll dig a little deeper and finding um Project Plowshare, your friend William Teller, Edward Teller, excuse me, <laughs> I'm thinking of... Not uh, my friend. <laughs> well, I, di I didn't mean friend. Uh, brilliant uh, physic, physicist, but... Um, and looking at Project Plowshare, it, 
But, you know, as, as a younger person, I probably would have said really good, I, good use for nuclear, thermonuclear uh, reactions, being able to alter the surface of the earth and, and uh, make canals or underground uh, you know, habitat, you know, being able to form this. And the work they were doing was noble. It was yeah, it, literally noble. They're talking at the top of the element chain, creating their own elements. You talk about noble. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that's that, that's it in a nutshell, Barbara. Um, okay. um, go back to question, those maps. Could you go one? back to those two maps? No, yeah, down, okay. down, down, oh. down, 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 down. Yeah. Uh, those two right there. Yeah. Okay, my, my first question is the one on the left. Um, I understand correctly, um, we're looking at the topographical layout before the tower was built in the bedrock. And my question is. Well, wait a minute. Let me clarify this before you ask. Okay. This is not where the, this is the site of building number four. That's, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So, so my question is, um, how far down, if, 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 if we were looking at that today, and 9-11 hadn't happened and they hadn't built the World Trade Center 4 yet. And that was exposed to the air. How far down under what became the lowest level of World Trade Center 4 are we looking at? Okay. Is it beneath the lowest level? Oh, yeah. This was this is the pre-existing bedrock uh, surface here that building number four was uh, would have been the lowest level. But that's, that's the one afterwards. Go back to the one before. No, this is... Uh... Yeah, this is this shows the level of the bedrock before that line there oh, is before. OK, yes. All right. Before it was built. Yeah. All right. And then where's the That's level? What, where's the level of the bedrock originally in the after 9-11? Yeah. This is this is the uh, geotechnical survey. This is the cross section and this is the uh, uh, um, uh, topographic. Uh, right. Show, show me, show me the two side by side again, if you would. No, you had it up before the two, before and after. This is before and after, but it also you shows. Can't really see it, it honey. No, 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 no. I want, I want that. The one we okay. Had Hold on a second. Yeah. I should. Uh, I'll improve the site and include those on this page too. The one we were at just a few minutes ago. Yeah, it's going to take a minute to get there because I, it's part of another demonstration. Another. Here we go. That's what that you one. want. Okay, right there. Okay. So my question is, um, all right, I see the level. It's hard to see because it's so small on my screen. That's why I went okay. to the bigger model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, so we've got I, I see the line of, of what was the ground level beforehand. Okay, I yeah. see them. All right. So this is sea level here where the zero is. And I'll go back to the to the more detailed model so that we can uh, see the you know, see the the levels now that now that we're oriented this would be uh this line here is the cross section this is the cross section and is expanded from this length here to this length here so that you can see the details in it. um this is mean sea level this is 60 feet below sea level which was the bottom uh, the bedrock level uh, that building uh, number four was built upon. And this is 100 feet below sea level, which is the bottoming of the cavities that were excavated beneath building uh, number four. So those cavities measure 40 feet from the mm -hmm. pre-existing surface to the bottom. Let me finish, please. Let me finish, please. And approximately 40 feet from side to side, which makes them a uh, spheroid. Um, this uh, mapping here was done not showing these overhangs here. These overhangs are details that are very important because they imply a bulge or a belly or the wide point of the thermal activity, which centered about 20 feet beneath the surface right, right about there yeah. and went up and sideways and down and melted the... Uh, melted the material, vaporized the material, and melted right. the material, and eventually created uh, the subsidences that, you know, that these... Now, it's interesting if you go back to that. Um, or just, you just go up a little bit so we can see these two side by side again. Just leave it there, if you would. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. the other two, up, up. The, the other two, the, the graphics. No, 
Yeah, 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 that one. Okay, so if you could put your uh, arrow on both the left and the right graphics of where the, the bottom uh, foundation of World Trade Center 4 was. You could put your arrow on that. It's too small for me to see. Well, that's yeah. That's why I have this other graphic here, which shows you exactly where World Trade Center Four is in comparison to those. Uh, no, no, uh, I'm not interested in that. Stop my question. I thought it was okay. Let's try again. If you can on this one here. If you can just put your arrow up in the upper uh, blow up, if you will, at the ground level, where where the very the very foundation of World Trade Center Four was. That would have been. Um, Right there. Above or uh, possibly keyed in. And then uh, if you could do the same on the left, the left graphic. There is not one for the left graphic. Well, but where it's it would be built. Where it would be built. There is not a cross section because there was no cavity. The, you know, they, they could have done a cross section. Of, Where's the ground? There is no cross section. This is a cross section of this. There's no cross section of this. Well, what? am I looking at above on the left? The pink, uh, what am I looking that, at? That is because I, I, I overlaid this and the detail remained behind this overlay. This is the only detail that we want to look at on this side here. This is only because I laid this on top of oh, this. Oh, I see. You took part of what's on the right and added it to the left. Okay, I get it now. Or actually I took what you see on the left on the top on the left right now and put it on top of what you see on the right. To be on the really right. Yeah. Oh, I see. In other words, the the dark pink on the right was not there after 9-11. It was only the light pink. No, this is pre. Forget about everything that you see up here. You blank this Talking out. About on the right. Nothing that you see. You don't see any of this over here. Only this. Yes, I'm talking you about the right now. Post 9-11. And this is, as you can see by the marks on this, see that mark there and that mark there, that mark there, that mark there, and that mark there. These are overlaid. So the topographics are overlaid on each other and then aligned with the uh, with the site map with you know with the uh, site uh, graphics here. This was uh, you can go back, scroll down so I can see that again. Yeah. So my question was in the graphic on the right, the post a collapse survey. The dark pink was not physically there on the ground afterwards, correct? You're talking about this section right here, Barbara? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, okay, uh, let me do a little dissertation and explain what it is we're looking at here then. These are called overhangs and they were in the survey, but they are not included over here. Um, because they were taken out. You know, for some, you know, this is the this is the weird part right here. This um, this is a composite, which is kind of weird to think about, because they did the survey uh, and and interpreted that all these lines here were there before they took the. They couldn't have done that before they took these out, but they wanted to record that these were there, so they included them in the survey as a rough detail saying that these were overhangs they were not included in this because you you'd need x-ray vision or you'd have to do dotted lines or something to imply them so this okay, survey, so let me finish let, let me finish let me finish i to thought be, i was going to get to those clarification questions that's a, I mean I, that's what i'm working on right now is clarifying something so please <laughs> let me uh, complete my my thought process here these lines here were drawn after these were taken out but these were present. These were these were present before they drew this. Before they completed this section of the survey. Okay, I, let me ask my question. Yeah. The dark pink. I think when you say before they were taken out, my interpretation of that sentence is that they were physically there after the towers collapsed, and for some reason they took them out. That's correct. Why would they have taken them out? Because they needed to build a new building, uh, which uh, they couldn't build on loose uh, loose sections of bedrock. And the pictures that follow uh, the uh, WTC four uh, page in this are a real uh, a real you know slideshow of the of the um, sequence of of excavating these cavities. Uh, when, let me just go right to one of them uh, since we're here. Uh -huh. 
uh, the images here are just the most telling. This is just to demonstrate that there was an awful lot of heat coming up from underneath. Mm -hmm. Steam is being produced. This is the um, cavity uh, beneath the uh, east side of uh, WTC4. You notice that there's not hasn't been much traffic going into the hole. And also notice that this surface here, this surface here, appears to be an ancient, fractured, weathered, uh, oxidized surface. Mm -hmm. It's an old surface. It's not new. It's uh -huh. old. It's as ancient as the Ice Age. And this, um, some of this may have been part of the till-filled valley, but I'm, you know, we won't get into the, the till-filled valley yet. This is an overview uh, looking at the, uh, slur the east slurry wall over here. This would be the east cavity or the east holes. Mm -hmm. And this is the other hole that they discovered beneath building number four when they started after they cleared out the steel from the site. This is when they start chipping um, with a, this is a chipping hammer. So these are all the overhangs that we saw in the geological in the geotechnical survey that are no longer in existence because they're now being broken, broken away. They're being taken away from the site in dump trucks. So that they stability already, purposes, right? What? For stability purposes, right? Well, not just for stability purposes. They intended to build on the site. Right. Oh, Didn't the stability, yeah, build the stability of anything they were going to build on the site, right. They were doing this to reduce the site to solid bedrock again, and the overhangs were, were dangling participles. Did they, in fact, build on that site? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, hey, there's a brand new building for, and I'll bet that this... Uh, See this? This is like one of the most telling and inclusive, uh, just brilliant, brilliant composition because it shows the coarse, cleft, old, broken bedrock surface that has been exposed to the elements for eons. Mm -hmm. This has been exposed to the elements for eons through maybe one or two ice ages even. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But this is brand spanking, sparkling, shining coarse gritty new that I don't, I don't see so much the difference i well, don't where's the difference you'll, you'll see it as we uh, come down here oh by the way chris joya told us hey lorenzo that's the new building number four they had the new building number four up before they huh. even finished cleaning the site out beneath uh, no new, that's building tower, number seven number seven excuse me new tower seven well, thank you. Thank you, Susie. You're you're on target. You are good. She I'm knows. still here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't play my video, but I'm still here. That's good. Yeah, this I've is a, I've got a fundamental question. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear this, Susan? Yeah. Yeah. Because of the two major cavities uh beneath World Trade Center four. Does that not imply that there were two thermonuclear devices, not just one? Yes, because absolutely. What? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think you saying that. I think it's important to say very yeah, Well, I, I think it's very important to think that, too, or to know it, too. The question is, and this is something that's puzzled me and continues to puzzle me, is were they simultaneous? You know, they, were they really well-sized simultaneous events, or were there two discrete events that were timed not at the same not to not to coincide you know was it one event that was recorded before the was it one or both of these events simultaneous that was recorded before and this is what i surmise was the event that created the the uh, heat that uh that, that killed a number of people in the sub basement levels of the world trade center not beneath building number four including building number four but William Rodriguez, yeah, we'll get in deeper into the weeds. Well, hold you... on, before you go on, clarification. Which World Trade Center building are you referring to killed people in the basement? World Trade Center 1 or 2 or both? Well, uh, William Rodriguez was in the basement of WTC 1. WTC 1. 1. Um, and WTC 1 was the South no, North no. Tower. North yeah. Tower. I get them confused sometimes. Um, yeah, so I surmise that 
there was a thermonuclear event that created high pressure and high temperature steam, which is what those second degree, which what caused the second degree burns of the survivors that were uh, that came out of the uh, sub basement levels after the event or events. Why wouldn't you assume it had to do with a thermonuclear device beneath World Trade Center One itself? Why? I mean, that well, that. That that's a good question. Um, that's kind of what I thought. For I, mean, I used to think that these cavities were the ones beneath were, were the things that they excavated down to beneath towers one and two because I knew about the subsidence craters underneath them for a lot before I knew what the location of this of these cavities were. And that was the thing that was puzzling me the most was what what is this site? Where you know where are these? Uh, where are these geological formations? And it was recall, David Meiswinkle. Closer to World Trade Center 2 than 1. So Go that ahead, doesn't, Susie. That doesn't, uh, doesn't ring true to me. Go ahead, Susie. I, I, I didn't hear Barbara, but go ahead, Susie. Um, uh, well, let Barbara repeat what she was saying. Well, I'd like to get clarified what the source of my investigation or this particular discovery or you know, the poking that brought me to this particular discovery of the of the two geotechnical surveys and maybe some of the stuff that happened subsequently. But go ahead, Susie. And you, um, can, you can refer to Barbara. David Meiswinkle. David Meiswinkle pointed him out. He said, ask Miss Moss. And that's what started this whole, how he was able to pinpoint it to um, uh, building four. Because he what did contacted, you, I couldn't hear you. What did my Swinkle say? He said, ask Miss Moss. Miss who? Moss, M-O-S-S. -S. Who's Miss Moss? Cheryl J. J <clears throat> Cheryl J. Moss, Musa Rutledge Consulting Engineers. Uh, 14 oh. Penn Plaza, New York. I, oh. I emailed both of both her and Charles McGurian, who are the principal uh, authors of the geotechnical or the geological report, not the geotechnical oh. survey. Uh -huh. they, I'll let Susie tell the story that, that, that blew the whole thing out of the water. So that's how he got these, the pre-construction map that you saw. Yeah, from Miss Moss, and that's where he was. Able they weren't public. They weren't in a published report beforehand. Yeah, yeah, was that a was published a published report. report. Um, oh. And he, that's how he was able to pinpoint because it has Liberty Street, and you know, it has the location. So that's uh -huh. how he was able to pinpoint it was uh, Building Four. Um, and uh, then when he shared that with Richard Gage um, um, uh, almost immediately the site uh, eliminated that where she had the map previously the site oh. eliminated the map you mean they left everything else in and eliminated those maps that's yep. precisely correct yep fortunately he had already saved it yeah, thank goodness. And they're available on, on, another, on site. another site as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, I, I think you believe, as I do, that there was one nuclear device beneath each of the Twin Towers in World Trade Center 7. Why would number four have two? That's well, a good question. That's a, one of the best. And I'd love to, I'd love to um, do a, a quick little you know, you know, analysis. Okay. If there were, if there were um, vaults down there, and there's a possibility that um, I've heard that there was a lot of gold that was taken out of this area. <laughs> One of the things would be to destroy evidence. Um, um, another one would be, well, I don't know. It, it, it's just one of the, the most amazing mysteries and puzzles that, that I've ever experienced in my life. And I've just you know, been a part of it since, you know, since, yeah. since the day it happened. The answer to that question is purely hypothesis. You yeah. really don't know. You don't mm. know? Yeah. So do I understand correctly from what was said previously? I think by you, Lawrence, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I interpreted what you said 
that Richard Gage encouraged you to follow up the nuclear hypothesis? That would Oh, me. I would never say that. I mean, I could never implicate Richard of being a nuker. Well, in <laughs> what sense did he encourage you? I thought you said he encouraged you to do something. Um, as he ridiculed me in our last um, conversation on his uh, Richard Gage Unleashed podcast, uh -huh. I think that I forget what Susan uh, called. He, uh, he, Susan said that you patronized Lorenzo. Uh -huh. I said, you know, essentially set, you know, set the, you know, my, my conspiracy theory self is going to say he and Gene Luratunda had a little script and I was set up um, and on his podcast, he ridiculed the theory. Oh, you mean you were um, interviewed on his podcast? Yeah. Oh, I could I could watch that myself. Yeah, because yeah. Richard is vicious against publicly against anyone. I've been in uh, conferences where there was a presentation where Richard was in the audience, uh, and there was a presentation on uh, nuclear events, World Trade Center one, two, and seven hypothesis. And he got up at the mic and just railed against the person. I felt, well, I, I felt, uh, you know, I, I think you protested too much. Well, you know, as an as an independent investigator and somebody who's primarily into the mechanics, um, I'm really clear that the work that I've done is valid. Uh, and if the sources are, you know, this is one of the sources right here that we're looking at, which is this image. Um, Are we looking at one of the two pits in World Trade Center 4? This is uh, one of the, yeah, this is a definition of one of, you, know, you can notice that it's all broken away and chipped away. You know, all those overhangs are now gone. And this would be where the widest area, it appears that they've, they've done some pouring of uh, concrete to flatten the bottom here. But I'll bet you that these uh, details still exist down there. You could get, go down there and see these walls. Hmm. It'd be, uh, I'd love, I mean, I would love to have the opportunity to just view this mm -hmm. site at some point. Yeah. To be invited to uh, uh, take a look at, look at what we did. Look at what, look right. at what we did. So, yeah, uh, this is, uh, again, you can see by this pipe here that this is, I think, on the north end of the site. I'm not really sure. There's things that I haven't really totally clarified. You can also see that they are drilling cores. This is uh, the type of device that they may have used or something smaller uh, to, if they were indeed put, installing new devices beneath the towers. Or maybe they did pre-drill. You mean the new towers? No, the old towers. The, you know, the old? Destruction. Yeah, we don't know what the process of destruction or planning for that destruction was. Oh, you, you, are you saying we're looking before they built the first World Trade Center 4 or after the destruction of World Trade Center 4? Well, this is after the destruction. They're, yeah. they're, they're drilling core samples to see what the condition of the bedrock is because they're, they're, they're about to build on the site. They, oh, and they're about you can, to build the new one, yeah. Yeah, you can see that they put, put up forms. There are some por forms that have been uh, already uh, poured, you know, some footings that have already been poured here, uh, and uh, they have a form over here. Uh, it appears as though this is forming here for uh, something also. Okay. Uh, again, that's the uh, new building number four, uh, new building number seven. Yeah, yeah. new building number seven. Uh, Chris, thank you again, Chris Joy. You can also see some of the formwork that's going in for the new uh, building number uh, four. The one uh, right above uh, that, what are we looking at? That's the bedrock after. Yeah, this after is the, the this melting. Is... No, keep, keep going up if you would a little. Yeah, this is one of the most, yeah. We're looking down at that, right? No, we are looking into the side, Barbara. Oh. Okay. The side. That's that's looking up over here. This is up. Okay. This is you know, this is vertical. This line here is vertical. This one here is horizontal. Oh, I but see. This, okay. this and you can see that there's the different striations. The bedrock in this area uh, had been formed, originally formed. Uh, this Manhattan schist, uh, metamorphic rock, was formed uh, during the, the the early for I, I can't tell you the exact era, you know, paleontology, you know, the era of, but it was formed flat. These layers that you see here you, were formed flat, you know, like pancakes. But this, in the moving of the plates, this part of New York, this section, a huge section of the plate. Turned up. It used, it used to be edge. horizontal, then it went vertical. Yes, yes, thank you. 
uh, and then the heat that was created inside here vaporized and eventually reached a melt boundary. And you can see that there are gradients as it moves up uh, to where they started uh, chipping and fracturing. So they, they still power washed all this stuff off. It was still hot enough to fracture. But this one here is just such a beautiful detail. And it so implicates or so uh, suggests that it is not ancient whatsoever. That it's is, not what? I couldn't hear you. This is not an ancient formation. This is not. Well, not right. I, I think you're, I'm interpreting that that this this concentric circles was from the thermonuclear device. That's my interpretation, is that this is a boundary, a heat boundary that was uh, pretty much as hot as it, you know, the, the material getting up to this point here was hot enough to fracture the surface of the of the surrounding bedrock. And that um, that this this detail here is the most telling. And and I'm so grateful in a very kind of perverse way that I mean, if I had never found this, I wouldn't be where I am today. I, I don't know. Which I might be happy. I, I might be happy somewhere. <laughs> Go Which ahead, detail Barbara. are you referring to? This uh, detail over here. Yeah, I mean, it's way below where the bedrock was before. But this particular detail here that they left these what they termed as overhangs and they show that this one here had uh, subsided and this one here is had heaved up, had heaved up. This one here was moved up by the material being fractured and lifting from below and the pressure know? lifting it from how you, below. How do, you know how do we know that? Because that used to be the surface. That's That was the bedrock surface right there, that dotted line. That dotted line there was the bedrock surface, the mean surface of the bedrock that they... Oh, I see. Lifted up a little bit, not much. Yes, but it yeah. just shows that it lifted up. I mean, you don't lift bedrock up easy. I mean, I couldn't do it. No. It'd take a hell of a, hell of a, hell of a lot of levers and people. Okay, so... So I'm sure you ask yourself, both of you, this question, and then I've, then I've got to go, I've got to make dinner. But the question is, why do you think, this is, you know, asking for your speculation, maybe. Yeah. I why, why do you think that A&E in general, and Richard Gage in particular, kids yelling in the bathroom, why do you think A&E in general, and Richard Gage in particular, when he was you know, head of A and E, and even still, is so adamant uh, about ignoring or refusing to speak publicly. I, you broke up, Barbara, and you froze up. We're under the tower. Could you repeat that, please? Because I it it broke up. Why do you think Richard Gage and A and E are so? Can you hear me now? Yep, I can did for me? a while. I can still hear you. Why do I think that Richard Gage yeah, and A&E, okay, repeat, you can go from I'll that point. The I'll repeat the question. I don't know what you didn't hear. Why do you think A&E and Richard Gage in particular are so adamant about denigrating and denigrating evidence of nuclear events and refusing to even discuss them publicly? Why? I don't go there. I'm sorry. I do. Well, I'll allow you to do that. Please expound. Yeah, well, I, I'm convinced that there were nuclear events in the deep base, below the deep basements of World Trade Center 1, 2, and probably also 7, and, you know, from your work also twice under 4, maybe some of the others as well. You look at World Trade Center 6, there's a huge cavity there. Well, that's, um, I will talk about that later, but yeah, I've got, I've already shared that. I'll share it with you again. Well, no, let, let me finish. I'll tell you when I'm done. So, there's no question that something huge went on beneath the towers uh, even yeah. before the planes hit yeah. in World Trade Center 1 and 2. We know that. So why why not just make that part of what you give to the public? That's my take, and it has been since the very beginning, Barbara. Why not just say, we don't know. Here's some evidence. Look at it. Here's well, some testimony. You, Listen to it, <laughs> including Richard's, including Richard's dissertation on the, on the uh, seismology, which is crucial to this study. Yeah. Well, but again, he only did that after I forced it into. Well, I'm so grateful that he did that. 
I wouldn't sorry, have what? taken it. I wouldn't have taken it to this to this extent if he hadn't clarified the timing on that, or Andre Rousseau hadn't done the research, and Richard hadn't presented it as well and concisely as he did. Totally grateful to Richard for the work that he's done in this area. Yeah, I asked well, him. To why don't you let later. Barbara finish? I think she was about to explain why she thinks they won't go there. Okay. Okay. So. I've had many, many, many interactions with Richard, including when he and I did the speaking tour, just the two of us together in Europe and the UK. We had many, many, many meals together, in the car together. We had hours, dozens of hours together. And I kept asking, I said, Richard, now this is before, before we did the World Trade Center one, two and seven grand jury petition. Okay, when when he was still with A&E and A&E became uh, a plane. Just before that, that was in 2017, when we were in Europe and the UK together. And I said over meals, I said, Richard, why, why do you say that the number one smoking gun at the World Trade Center is World Trade Center 7, which is hard for people to get. They care about the planes, they care about World Trade Center 1 and 2. Why do you distract them when we have proof of massive deep basement or even maybe below B6 level in World Trade Center 1 and 2 before plane impacts. That clearly is the smoke. Those are the smoking guns. They are the smoking guns that any kindergartner can get. It's a hard sell to the general public, not yeah. to the choir. It's a hard sell to the general public. You've been distracting the attention of the general public and the world from the true smoking guns. Wow. Any kindergartner can get this, and he would not give me a straight answer. Yeah, he's never given me a straight answer either. Well, wow. that's because, because they want it just to be about nanothermite. Yeah. Nanothermite I... is just part of the picture. It's there, yeah. yes, but it can't explain pre-plane impact explosions in the deep basement. Right. Or nor nor has the uh, location nor has the location been pinpointed. There are witness testimony that said there was explosions in the basement. Those those testimony uh, essentially saying something happened beneath us. They couldn't say exactly what the point source of that explosion or the heat source was. So that's why I went back to building number four. Um, yeah, I think it's too far away for oh, explaining yeah. building not number one. Then yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm an, I have a very engineering mind. I understand energy flow, and steam is steam, and it goes wherever it can. And if it's at a high pressure, it goes there really quickly. And if it's at a high temperature, it can do a lot of damage. Steam, you know, once it gets atmosphere, uh, is 212 degrees. But uh, you know, under pressure, it's you know, down deep below. It's where it's being created. It's just being well, really Rodriguez. If you if you go to our World Trade Center grand jury petition, I'm the one who forced the issue of the deep basement explosions before plane impact into our petition, and that was uh, right. against, you know Richard argued against it, but I prevailed. Okay, and we've got if you go there and you go to our to our website and you pull up our exhibits, about 50 or 60 exhibits, there are exhibits, not only the Rousseau um, analysis, but also the testimony of Willie Rodriguez and other witnesses. Absolutely, absolutely. That, let me finish. Um, this is very important, uh, that the um, there was a massive explosion at least beneath, at least beneath the B3 level, the lowest level was B6, in World Trade Center one. And those were the first explosions, 14 seconds before the plane hit above. Willie Rodriguez estimated nine to 10 seconds, but we now know from the seismic record, it was about 14 seconds before the plane hit above. And according to Willie and many other people's testimony, that there was this massive um, vertical um, explosion Bump. that went up vertically yeah. up from the basement in the elevator shafts. So something was in those elevator shafts at a deeper level than B3. Uh, would you like my comment on that? Yeah. Okay, I'm still under the impression that 
um, the event did not have to be directly underneath that building. There was a lot of ways for the energy created wherever it was. And I'll again, re I'll repeat that I believe that the events beneath building number four are what created the steam, the high pressure and high velocity steam that were moved rapidly into the west bathtub and um, killed people in the lowest levels and people that were lucky enough to be near the elevators or in the elevator shafts on upper levels survived and you know, lived to tell about it. So anybody in the World Trade Center beneath a certain level was probably affected by this immense amount of heat that was produced, again, what I believe to be beneath building number four, by the production of steam. Well, which, what, what are you let, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Thank you. The more the, the enormous amount of steam that was produced in a very short period of time beneath building number four. This is what I surmise. This is a theory. Okay. That I don't agree with it. That, and, and they would have upheaved, you know, I mean, you notice that, that there were upheavals in the bedrock. Imagine that that's what they felt in the tower. It didn't have to be right below them. It did not have to occur directly below them. All it didn't have to, but by Occam's razor, it almost certainly did. And what right. Don't reason, let's not go there. I'm not going to argue this with you. No, no, I'm going to argue it. I'm going to give you the reason that I don't think it was World Trade Center for. Um, I, I'd like to move on. I, no, I, I, no, I'm not going to move on. I'm going to have this one sentence. Okay. Okay. Um, the one sentence is that the best argument against that is that we know that there were deep basement explosions, but that they were explosions that came up the elevator shaft, shafts themselves in both World Trade Center 1 and 2 at significantly different times. For your theory to be correct, I believe that they would be at the same time and they were not. You realize that the that those elevator shafts were all connected in the sub-basement level. It wasn't like um, th there was something happening. That all, something... The more, all the more reason that there had to have been two separate explosions, one deep in World Trade Center 1, one deep in World Trade Center 2. Well, I'm not going to negate that that's a possibility. 16 but minutes. Not the, not the ones that brought the cores down, not the ones that no, brought the cores down. No, they're 16 seconds apart, the ones before the plane impacts. They were 16, I'm sorry, 16 minutes apart. Okay. 846 and 903. I'll bet that those were still beneath building number four. I don't think so. Okay, we, we agree to disagree on this one. We agree to disagree on that. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned steam and explosions, um, the source of the explosion, whether or not it was steam or uh, combustible explosions, the injuries that the people um, suffered, you know, where their skin was melting off, right? Yeah, I, I believe they call it second degree burns. Whatever the skin was was harmed by heat. Yeah. So, it was literally falling off their arms, like, like exactly, exactly. Yeah. So and if, their faces. If if let me finish, finish my question. If that heat source was steam then their clothes would have been intact. If that heat source was combustible, their clothes would have been scorched and burned as well. So yeah. missing completely. Yeah. So which was it? I've um, never really gone to that uh, detail. That's a good detail. To, uh, I, do, I do know the answer. They did not need to. You know, that, that one guy with his skin. I can't stand these children. Right. I've got to leave this place in a few minutes. <laughs> um, I'm in a restaurant and there are these screaming kids literally running. <laughs> they, they allow dogs and kids in this restaurant. Um, well, maybe the, maybe the dogs will eat the kids. His clothes was not missed. His clothes were not there. Their, their clothes were gone. Yes, on his arms. So that would be a combustible, not steam. I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there, was, there was an explosion um, beneath World Trade Center one and two at some level. Yep. Yeah. Could be. 
Yeah. So steam wouldn't have caused those uh, uh, personal injuries. Well, it wouldn't have caused the uh, the uh, scorching or the burning of uh, fabric. No, it would have. It would have. Uh, if there were wrinkles in it, it would have fixed those. <laughs> yeah, let's not make a joke about this. Um, I'm sorry. That's an important important point. Yeah, Steve it is. did not yeah, cause those burns. Then I'm going to have to leave. I can't stand the yelling. Yeah. Of all this has been uh, painful and productive. <laughs> <laughs> thank you're you, for, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're, you're welcome. No, this, this is very good. It's it, um, it, it's hard when you have something you're trying to get across and it's complicated and the person listening simply doesn't understand yet. And if you don't allow clarification questions in the moment, then you're lost, you know. Yeah. So it's um it, anyway it it was valuable both ways and I think we need to understand why A and E and Richard are so adamant against this because I have a suspicion my suspicion has been for years now ever since Richard it, it was when Richard wouldn't go there publicly when he knew about the fact explosions right. for God's sake that's more of a smoking gun for the general public than anything about World Trade Center 7. But he wouldn't touch it. And then when I saw that he wouldn't, well, then I learned about the evidence for um, for nuclear, event, nuclear events under World Trade Center 1, 2, 7, and now 4, maybe 2 under 4, maybe some others as well. Maybe some others. He won't go there. They won't. He, the bottom line is, what's this common denominator? Something under the building. So the defacement of the building. They, he doesn't want to touch A and he won't touch anything from the ground level data. I get that. I got it. Why is a really good question. Thank God I'm not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what's the real conspiracy? Not whether there was <laughs> All right. Yeah. Holy crap. This okay, has been Barbara. I'm <laughs> so grateful that you joined us and that we are <laughs> on some frequencies. Well, it was I'm sorry I didn't make the last one. I sat through it. I meant to. Well, each one of these has been more and more valuable in, in, in its own ways. The one the conversation that I had with Alan Abrams, the ones that I've had with Bill although he's very reluctant to commit. He does read uh, topographic charts. I can't even hear you now. I'm going to have to go. I can't even hear you. Okay. Barbara, thank you. Children, I've got to go. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Oh. Bye. All right. Good night. Night. Stay with me, Susie. Don't, don't leave me. <laughs> I want to see your beautiful face. Well, it's got a bobblehead or something weird. I love it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay for now yeah it's good yeah but it kept going staticky and bobbleheading and uh, face face morphing <laughs> it was yeah, that, weird that's fun, that's fun stuff Th Bar, uh, thank you for hosting this that was a good session yeah I don't know who that iPhone oh let's stop recording yeah okay okay that's all that's all folks <laughs>